Howdy SEO Muzz fans, welcome to a special edition of Whiteboard Plus. Today we're actually talking a little bit meta about Google Plus and Google Search Plus Your World, which is Google's new effort to take their social network, Google Plus, and involve it more in exceedingly in, uh, intricate ways with your search results and with everyone's search results. So I, I want to talk about a little bit about what this means and why, in my opinion, every marketer, every web marketer needs a Google Plus strategy for their site, for their content. If, if you don't, I think you're going to be missing out uh, very, very quickly. I think Google has, has really forced marketers' hands in this way, businesses in particular that have content on the web. I, I'll show you what I mean by this. So, I've got some reasons why I believe this. Number one, Google Plus is in the search results like you have never seen before. Let me illustrate for you really briefly with some search results that I've drawn up here. I uh, even made the little icon with my finger. So when I perform a search like Rand Fishkin, uh, and if you are connected to me on Google Plus, you'll actually see results remarkably similar to this, where my Google Plus profile outranks all my other content. There was a, uh, a great rant from someone who I'm not usually a big fan of because of his denial of the power of SEO, but Jason Calacanis uh, actually had a nice rant on Google Plus itself where he noted that his Google Plus profile was outranking all of the other content, his uh, blog, his Twitter profile. My wife noticed the same thing for her uh, everywhere to account for her, her travel blog, how essentially Google Plus had taken over the number one spot for a lot of brand names and personal names, obviously with the intent of hoping that people will contribute more to Google+, Plus, that they'll keep their profiles updated, because if you don't, it looks kind of bad. Uh, so what you see here is my Google profile. You'll actually see a photo of me. You see that I'm in Seattle, Washington, right? It's pulling some metadata in here. And then they'll give you some links to other places where I am on the web that I've chosen for my Google Plus profile. So obviously, this is almost like having to claim a LinkedIn profile so that people can find me on LinkedIn or a Facebook profile so people can find me on Facebook. Google is really making this essential and the way they're doing it is through Google+. Plus. Now it's not just personal brand names and personal profiles. They do this for some pretty big sites too. Uh, and in fact, you'll also see a ton of other Google Plus stuff inside the search results. I'll, I'll show you what I mean here. So you can see obviously the plus one, but they will often have a count of plus ones that come from that. They'll also have people who in your network have plus one or shared a particular result. And those are essentially almost rich snippets, rich data that you can't get any other way. There's no other way to get people in your network whose profile is connected. It's not like they're going to show you, you know, people who liked uh, SEO Moz's Facebook page or people who follow SEO Moz on Twitter who also, who you also follow. This Google Plus has become one of the only ways to get the social proof that you used to be able to get through all sorts of Google social search. Now, this being said, uh, Matt Cutts did point out, Matt Cutts is, is one of the search quality engineers over at Google Runs the Web Spam team there. He did point out that for a few other networks, Flickr, Quora, uh, FriendFeed, which was, which was bought by Facebook, uh, and a couple others, sometimes those results can be in here as well. It's extremely rare. Uh, you, you can find it, but it's tough to see. And Google Plus is clearly the best and easiest way to get into this type of uh, markup, into these kinds of results. And remember, this stuff, not only is it appearing, it pushes results higher. So for example, if I am searching for something, and let's say uh, Kenny Martin from SEO Moz has shared something on Google Plus, uh, or he's plus one it, I am likely to see that higher in my search results because I follow, Ke Kenny is in one of my circles on Google Plus. What this means, obviously, is that the size of your network, right? If my, you know, if my network on Google Plus is quite small, the people I follow are quite small, I better hope that one of the, them has done the sharing of the content that I care about. But what I'd really like to do is have a huge network, well, I'm not illustrating it well, huge, huge, huge network, right? That encompasses, you know, hopefully hundreds of thousands of people who are following me. You can see Danny Sullivan, I think, right now has something like 390,000 people who are in his circles. When you think about the power of that, everything that Danny has ever shared, ever plus one, ever put on Google Plus, is going to appear in those hundreds of thousands of people's search results higher than it normally would. And right now, Google is being extremely liberal about this, ranking things that 
you know, may not even have the keywords in the title tag, maybe only ancillary, have ancillary relevance to the keyword search that's going on. So they are really, really pushing this forward. And then in one of the most aggressive moves I've ever seen Google make, they have a new box on the side of the search results. This box says uh, people and pages on Google+. So for example, I did a search, a logged out search for news. And I could see entities that have their Google Plus pages featured over here with their pictures. There was no pictures over here. You know, I was logged out. I wasn't getting any of the so-and-so plus one this. But here I was getting suggestions of brands that I should be following on Google Plus. And these weren't major brands. They were smaller brands. I didn't even recognize them with a few hundred thousand people in their circles. Uh, Kenny was sitting next to me at the computer, you know, side by side here in the Whiteboard Friday room. And he did a search for SEO and up popped Myself, Rand Fishkin, and Danny Sullivan. Think of the power of that. If you can have your brand, your personal brand on Google Plus associated with a broad term like SEO or web marketing or surveys or used cars or whatever it is that you're selling or the idea that you're trying to promote, insanely powerful. And this is one of the biggest reasons why I think uh, Google Plus is going to force its own success inside Google search results. Remember, when we talk about the power of Facebook marketing, we're talking about 800 or so million Facebook users. Google search has literally billions of users performing billions of searches a day. So the user group for this is absolutely phenomenal, just tremendous. And it's not just in the US, although Google search plus your world is much more US focused right now. I suspect it'll be rolling out uh, in the weeks, to month, weeks and months to come. So obviously, Google, search, Google Plus in search results, the personalization that we talked about where these results are ranking higher. Uh, you can see an example of that down here. Your images related to, you'll see this little icon, this guy here. When you see that icon, that means it's being personalized. Google Plus is essentially personalizing your results inside of Google search to show you content that they think is either your content or content of people that you're connected to. Photos is one of the most obvious ones uh, that they're showing right now. But they'll show you profiles, they'll show you links and URLs that have been shared, that you've shared, that they think are part of your world. Fascinating stuff, uh, but definitely a bias towards Google Plus related content. If you're sharing on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, you're rarely uh, ever going to see this here unless you have some very deep social connections often through Google Plus or through Quora, which is kind of how Google uh, is accessing social data to Twitter and Facebook right now. Uh, number three, Google Plus adoption. I think things like this, right? Look at this. Learn how you could appear here too. There's a link right there so that for those searches, you know, when CNN does a search for news and they go, where are we? Well, learn how you could appear here too. Oh, well, we, we better get on that. We got to get a campaign going. If we don't, we're going to be losing out because people, they know people are going to be clicking on these results rather than on these results. Uh, and the adoption of Google Plus, you know, something over 60 million users right now, I would suspect that number rises to 100 million very fast, almost certainly by the end of this year. Uh, the richness of the snippets and markup. You can see the visuals in here, the, the visuals on the side, the visuals with the personal elements, with the images, with the uh, icons of people that you know and follow and entities and brands that you know and follow on the service. That's going to be absolutely huge. Imagine having the ability to have endorsements of your brand from people that your customers already know. I think that's going to be a big one. Number five, I see Google using this long term perhaps even in the short term if they can get enough adoption for web spam and search quality signals. Essentially saying, hey, this brand, this entity, this website, this, these URLs, they have no activity whatsoever in our social graph, right? They haven't been shared through any service that we can connect to, nor have they been shared on Google Plus or Plus One. I'm not so sure that this website is of high quality. It just seems to have a bunch of links pointing to it. Perhaps we should be discounting some of that link graph unless there's social supporting elements. And I think over time, that's one of the ways that they intend to fight manipulative link spam. So definitely, people need to be thinking about that from a marketing perspective. And number six, uh, the biasing to social and Google Plus in search. You know, for a long time, search results had, yeah, you know, you could do a search like this. You would see some social results. They'd generally be the one or two bottom results if there was something relevant. But Nowadays, you're seeing that, that Google is essentially saying, you know what, we are willing to forego a little bit of quality and relevance 
in favor of showing Google Plus and social stuff in our results more heavily. I think that's, that's them saying, we're going all in, baby. Um, now, this being said, I, I, I won't get into it, but I think there are some, certainly some risks for Google, that, that quality and relevancy stuff. There are a lot of examples out there on the web, on, on blog posts all over the place, on, on Mashable, on TechCrunch, on Paris Lemon's blog, on um, uh, some of the other, uh, Danny Sullivan wrote about it on Search Engine Land, that Google's not doing the best job with relevancy because they're biasing to this Google Plus stuff. That being said, if they keep doing this, if they stick with it, I think marketers and brands and companies and pages will embrace this and make sure that these results are good. And over time, Google can pull back and show them more and more relevant stuff as more stuff gets shared on Google+. So I, I think there's, where there's the only risk, institutional risk that I see with this program that Google's rolled out is the governments of the world essentially saying, hey, you're doing monopolistic behavior using your uh, vast market share advantage in search to force people to use your social network. I, I don't want to comment on that. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a polit political expert or anything like that. But what I can say is, as a marketer, Google is very, very clearly forcing our hand and making sure that we use Google+. If I were you, I would be setting up a Google Plus content strategy. I would be making sure that whatever social sharing I'm currently doing also applies to Google Plus. If you are tweeting it, if you're Facebook sharing it, you're posting it to LinkedIn, you're you know, putting it in your Pinterest board, for God's sake, man, put it on Google Plus. You, you, you're, just, you're losing out if you're not uh, because the, the biasing is so heavy right now. All right, everyone, I hope you've enjoyed this edition of Whiteboard Plus. I look forward to the comments, participating in those. We will certainly have more content coming soon around specific tactics and strategies for Google Plus. I hope you'll join us again. Take care.